Hello my beautiful wonderful book of besties. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be sharing with you my April reading plans. <music> lying to you if I said I wanted to be here sitting here and filming this video and the reason being my allergies today y'all are so incredibly bad I cannot go 20 seconds without blowing my nose so that being said if you can hear cracks in my voice or whatever or my nose is red just ignore all that I'm still here I'm still ready to talk about books we we're just feeling a little bit under the weather so we have an iced coffee to cheer me up of course my biggest apologies if you hear me coughing or or sneezing or crackling whatever in this video please just ignore that because I was not planning to wake up today feeling as horrific as I do but enough complaining I'm here to share with you some very exciting plans I have for April including my own personal spring readathon that I'm so excited about but I'm just so happy it's spring obviously because of the spring allergies that does put a damper on things but I do have an amazing April TBR and I'm expecting like a straight five star reading month. I'm not joking. It's also a very big, very exciting book release month. So I'm going to be sharing with you all my anticipated reads for the month. So grab yourselves a snack or coffee and let's just go ahead and jump right in. First things first, I always like to chat about and include my book club over on Patreon called the Tea Time Society. I had three really great choices this month and two were constantly neck and neck. Like I honestly thought the other one was going to win, but I'm very happy that this one won and that is Heartless Hunter the Crimson Moth book one. I'm so stoked for this and so happy this one was chosen because I keep seeing it literally everywhere especially those Illumicrate editions that everybody has or fairy loot. I am just so jealous. That book is stunning so I cannot be more excited that this one was chosen. I'm very much in the dark about this one other than the fact I know it's a young adult romanticy that's about a witch and a witch hunter and it very much reminds me of Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin and I've heard this one is even higher stakes than that. I just have such a good feeling about this one and I'm hoping to read it very very soon just to kick off my April on a good note and I know that I'm going to be screaming because I want the second one right away. So if you are interested in this one or you've read it already and you want to join the discussion feel free to check out my Patreon below and you can join us for the live discussion. Next I want to talk about two readathons I'm going to be participating in and one of them I'm actually hosting over on my Patreon. It is our seasonal spring readathon. I do a readathon or host one every other month. We just have the best time doing a bunch of reading sprints over there and going super hardcore with our reading which is honestly what I need in April because March has not quite been it for my reading but this is just a week-long spring readathon starting April 22nd and going through the 28th so that is a Monday through a Sunday and I thought what better day to start a spring readathon than start it on Earth Day which is April 22nd. So I'm very excited that that worked out just perfectly but I'm going to run through the prompts real quick and just let you guys know what I'm planning to read as of right now. That could obviously change being the mood reader I am. So the first prompt is Spring Has Sprung, which is just to read a new to you author or a new to you series, which means you can choose the number one in a series to start. And for me, I'm going to be finally reading Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. And this is also going to double as our buddy read for the week. We're actually going to be reading this together and we are going to be having a live book discussion at the end of the week. There is nothing better than having a good old book discussion and I'm very excited for this one. I have heard mixed reviews but it is short for a readathon week. It's 280 pages and I've heard great things about this one especially that it has Bridgerton vibes which I think is going to be perfect in prepping us all for the new season. The next prompt is Earth Day which is just to pick a book with a nature element in the title or on the cover. It could have flowers on the cover. It could have tree in the title. Literally anything. You can be so flexible with these prompts. But for me, I chose a magical middle grade called Green Wild. I feel like this is just going to be the perfect week for me to finally pick this one up after talking about it so many times recently. It has this cute little botanist guide in the middle and there's pictures and illustrations and I think this is just so beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen a middle grade that has quite this many illustrations so I'm very excited for it. I don't know much about it but it's kind of giving me like Kiki's delivery because this girl has a cat on her shoulder. I mean if you have plants 
and cats and it's magical say no more i know this girl is going on a hunt to look for her missing mother and i just hope they get reunited in the end i don't believe this is a series but i'm not quite sure so i think this will just be the perfect time to pick it up and because it's middle grade i will easily be able to get through it for a readathon next prompt is it's time for some spring cleaning which is just to pick a book on your physical tbr it could be anything part of a series that you haven't finished yet a book that you've been meaning to get to for years we are just basically trying to clear off that tbr shelf at home that you have and for this one i am going to be reading ready or not which is a cute little romance and it's perfect for springtime because of the cover this was a book of the month choice i've heard a lot of my friends rave about this one and say it's like their new favorite romance ever and i don't know much about it other than this is a best friends like brother type of romance i know our main character is unexpectedly pregnant which again i've never read a trope like that in a book before so this is gonna be a very fresh new kind of take on a romance for me but i'm really excited about it and because it's a romance again it's gonna be really quick to get through for a readathon last but definitely not least it's probably my favorite prompt for this readathon is just to read a book outside i could read any of those books i just talked about but i think i am going to choose a graphic novel or manga because you can read it quickly in one sitting so there will be no sunburns over here i have lightfall number two and i also have the villainous turns the hourglass so lightfall is one of my all-time favorite graphic novel series he's actually coming out with number three in just a couple days i think on april 2nd so pretty close to when this video goes live and i need to catch up on this series i love the friendship element between these two i love the magic you just cannot compete with these illustrations but in case i read that one earlier rather than later i also have this as an option which is a book or a manga that i picked up on a whim but i also am putting really high expectations on it and i probably shouldn't do that because all i did was open the inside and i saw the pastel colors and the regency vibes and i was like yeah this absolutely has to be a book that i read this spring it also has like a time travel element to it and i think there's like a sister dynamic but i feel like the color palette and the cover and just the story sounds magical and fun so i think it's going to be perfect to pick up this month all right friends those are all the details on my spring readathon happening april 22nd over on patreon we're going to be having reading sprints like i said half a soul book discussion and we're also going to be doing an emma movie night i was trying to come up with a spring movie i was thinking studio ghibli but like i wanted to watch something i've never watched before and for some reason this movie has just passed me by and i've never seen it so it's pretty cheap to rent on amazon prime and i mean the cover the yellows like just the whole aesthetic of this movie is spring so i'm very excited to watch that for the first time with some of my patrons and i hope you will join us the next readathon i want to talk about is happening april 4th through 7th with the no body no crime book club my friend rachel's birthday is coming up very very soon and what better way to celebrate her birthday than a mystery thriller readathon rachel over at bestie book sleeve who you've probably gotten book sleeves from before she is formerly happy go lovely sleeves she also hosts her own mystery thriller book club and so she kind of just decided to weave a readathon and a book club kind of together and obviously it's taylor swift themed i don't actually remember all of the prompts for this readathon but i do know i'm probably going to be doing some type of 24 hour 48 hour readathon reading thrillers i'm super excited because i've 100 percent been in a mystery thriller mood lately so this could not have come at a more perfect time i do not have a set tbr yet so i have to figure out like what mystery thrillers i own fit the prompts i'm just excited to celebrate rachel and read mystery thrillers but one author that is definitely on my radar which you can probably guess from my past couple videos is frida mcfadden i am a sucker for her books i am just gonna admit it no shame these are all i want to read right now i just really want to work on catching up on her backlist and these are the two newest ones that i've purchased recently so i might be reading one or both that weekend never lie is also rachel's favorite so i'm really excited to get to this one specifically but this one is about a couple who moves into a house or a manor and finds these audio files of a psychiatrist that used to own this house that right there sucked me right in because you guys know i love letters i love mixed media so i think this one is really gonna hit the spot we also have the locked door which is about a woman who grew up not knowing 
knowing that her father killed women and kept them in their basement. So right there, I'm just like creeped out and weirded out. But apparently she becomes this surgeon and she's just trying to live a quiet life and stay under the radar. But one day she gets a victim who is hurt in the same way that her father used to hurt these women. So someone is on to her. I don't know what's going to happen. It sounds super creepy, but I've seen a lot of people rate this one really highly. So I'm also very excited to jump into this one. And I also have my most highly anticipated mystery thriller of the year, Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. I don't know what is holding me back from reading this one. I think I'm just waiting for the perfect time to pick this up when I'm in a reading slump or something because I know I'm going to love it. This one is about two best friends. One of them dies and so the other best friend is accused of killing her. But the thing is she doesn't even remember that day or whenever her friend died. There's also another person that's following her closely with like a podcast element. So obviously I've heard the audiobook is phenomenal and I just cannot wait to finally get into this one as well. So if you are a mystery thriller lover, I will leave all the details in the description below for you guys to join us for that readathon. We're obviously going to be doing spreads that Friday and Saturday, so it's just going to be a good old time. Okay, next we're going to jump into new releases, which has quickly become my favorite segment of these videos because I just love sharing and getting excited about new books that are coming out. And I've so graciously been sent by publishers some physical arcs that I'm very excited about because now I don't have to pay for them, but I also get to read them early. The first one is Draw Down the Moon by PC and Kristen Cast, which I am very excited about because this cover just drew me in. I knew nothing about it, but I requested an arc. I was like, I need this book. It is stunning. A Mystical School, A Mysterious Death, A Magical Romance, a stunning new contemporary fantasy duology. I think this one is set at some type of magical astrology school, which sounds perfect to me. But this book sounds incredible. It sounds like a fresh take on a young adult book, some unique elements I haven't heard or seen before, so I'm very excited about this one. I also have Bless Your Heart by Lindy Ryan, which was also blurbed by Josh Mallerman, and this sounds like it could be a Grady Hendrix book. It's about vampires, it's got dark humor, there are female main protagonists, and I think this is just gonna be a super fun time. I feel like if you like Southern Book Club by Grady Hendrix, you will probably like this one. I think it's just so fun that vampires are kind of making a comeback. I also have another beautiful book here that I I might keep to read in the summertime. That is a letter to the Luminous Deep. It's a gleaming treasure chest full of romance and curiosity. This book is entirely written in letters, which immediately makes me think of Divine Rivals because it's a romance, but it also takes place under the sea, and it kind of makes me think of Little Mermaid. It has really great reviews so far, so I'm excited to see what it's all about. We also have a short walk through a wild world, which this was not on my radar until recently because this randomly showed up up on my doorstep and I'm so happy that it did. This book sounds exactly like Addie LaRue. We have a nine-year-old girl who realizes that she has some type of illness and the only way she can get away from this disease is to constantly be on the move and traveling. So of course she goes on all of these adventures. I'm excited to see where this one takes me but I'm also very scared because I feel like some tears could be shed in the end. We also have Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez coming out. I feel like all of us have been anticipating this for such a long time. I actually get to meet her, get my book signed, and I'm so incredibly grateful and excited that she's coming to my town. But I will not be waiting until May to pick this one up because I'm going to be reading it immediately. We also have The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. And have I read the cheat sheet yet? No, I have not. But I promise I'm hoping to read that one first before I get into this one. I know this one is another sports romance. I believe it's football. It's following some side characters from the cheat sheet. So I'm just excited that we're getting another Sarah Adams book because I love her so much. Like I said earlier, we also have Lightfall number three coming out, which I am so excited we're getting some graphic novels popping up this year. I feel like there's none that I'm really excited about or looking forward to except for this one. So if you guys know of any other 2024 graphic novel releases, please let me know because I am just itching to read some more graphic novels. But I feel like there's nothing good coming out, so I am overly excited about this one. We also have The Familiar by none other than Leigh Bardugo. I know nothing about about it, but it looks spooky. It looks kind of Victorian gothic, possibly. I've been avoiding reading the synopsis because she really disappointed me with Ninth House, and I just want to go into this one not knowing a single thing. I just was not a fan of that book, so I'm hoping that this one has the chance to redeem herself for me because I love and adore her so much, so I'm crossing my fingers all up this one. And of course, we cannot forget that Miss Emily Henry is coming out with Funny
funny story. I cannot believe we have to wait till the end of April for this one. I'm honestly kind of glad that it is spread out from Abby Jimenez, so I have time to emotionally recover until Emily Henry's book. And last but not least, I have Every Time I Go on Vacation, Someone Dies. And with a title like that, it's kind of hard to overlook. Our main character in this book is an author. She goes on a book tour in Italy, I believe, which is perfect for summer. I mean, this cover just screams spring and summer. She named her main male character Connor, which was also named after her ex. And her ex, I think, shows up or gets killed. And I think he also dies in her book series. But now it's turning into like a real life mystery. I don't know. It sounds like one of those kind of funny, dark comedy, cozy mysteries that is just a really good time. And I am here for it. So no, unfortunately, I will not be able to read all of those books this month. But we do have a pretty decent release month. So I'm pretty excited about it. There's a lot of favorite authors. But these next couple books I want to talk about are just kind of like the rest of my mood reading pile. Everything else on this list is kind of like I have to read for readathons or book clubs but these books are just books that I've gotten recently or books that just fit the spring mood. So the first book is The Cheat Sheet because like I said I do have to read this before I read Sarah Adams new book and I don't know how I haven't read this yet. Very excited about it. It's another cute sports romance and anything by Sarah Adams I will read. I also have Lynn Painter's new book Happily Ever After. I've been dying to read one of her adult books ever since I read Better Than the Movies. So I think because this one is so short. I am going to try to fit this in at some point this month. Another big, big priority for me is to finally get around to reading The Hobbit. I told myself I was going to read it last month in March, and I did not, unfortunately. This book is very short. It should be easy to get through, but I really want to continue to brush up on kind of like my backlist fantasy books, and I don't know how I haven't read this yet because it's basically a classic and I adore the movies, so I definitely will be fitting this one in. I also can't believe I haven't started Foxglove by Adeline Grace yet. I love these audiobooks, so I think this is the way I'm going to be reading this one as well. I've been super into gaming and coloring and just other cozy hobbies recently, so I think this is going to be the perfect pair with a cozy gaming night. And yes, I'm finally going to be prioritizing Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies because it is about time. I probably have had this on 10 TBRs at this point. I might end up reading this for my spring readathon just to force myself to read it and get through it. But regardless, I still am very, very excited to finally get to this one. Cozy fantasy is kind of a genre that I have yet to explore a lot in, and I feel like this is the number one books that I should probably start with. I also have The Hedge Witch of Fox Hall, which is a book that I have been highly anticipating because it sounds incredible. A prince who hates magic. A prince who has spent his life hiding from it. A witch who is determined to protect it. This book is set in Wales. It obviously sounds like there's a little bit of a love triangle going on, but there's a witch involved, which we love those cottagecore witchy vibes. There's also a dragon on the front, which sounds like absolute perfection. So I'm really excited to read this one. I feel like it could be kind of like a hidden gem that no one's really talking about. And last but not least, I've been in a huge Studio Ghibli mood lately. I've been watching some of the movies with some of my friends. We've been doing movie nights and we've been slowly watching all of them. And it's just been the perfect time to get into those during the spring season. And because Beyond the Clouds has been compared to Final Fantasy and Studio Ghibli, I would love to finally dive back into this manga series. The first one was so cute. It made me tear up and I just love the friendship element. But I feel like this is really going to cure those Studio Ghibli cravings. And I'm really excited because I also have the third one. But if you love a manga that's just cute, that has magical elements and creatures and just a good friendship bond, I feel like this could be a really fun one for you to explore. Well, all right, friends, there is my plans for April. We definitely have a busy reading month. We've got a couple readathons. I feel like it's been a while since I've done a readathon, so I'm very excited to read and vlog and just hang out with you guys those weeks. Definitely check out my Patreon for the spring readathon I'm doing because I think it's just going to be so much fun. I love doing a readathon here on YouTube, but honestly, I also love just doing a readathon with like a really close knit group of people. But I hope you guys have the best reading month ever. I definitely have some catching up to do for March, but hopefully these readathons will come at the perfect time for me to finally do that. But thank you so much for being here, clicking on this video, commenting, liking, all of that good stuff. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in my next video.